Coming up on this weekend, computer hardware, 10 terabytes, one waterproof drive. The $5 Pi you can't buy, Yoga's P4 workstation, two motherboards, one PSU, and the AMD Crimson patch is coming. All that and more coming up next on Twitch. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twitch. Bandwidth for Twitch is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twitch This Week in Computer Hardware, episode 343, recorded December 3rd, 2015. 10 terabyte drives. This episode of This Week in Computer Hardware is brought to you by Wealthfront. Wealthfront is a low cost automated investment service that is the most sophisticated way for you to invest your money. Whether you've got millions or you're just starting out, visit Wealthfront.com slash Twitch to sign up and get your free personalized investment portfolio. That's Wealthfront.com slash Twitch. This episode of This Week in Computer Hardware is brought to you by Braintree. Even the best mobile app won't work without the right payments API. That's where the Braintree V.0 SDK comes in. One amazingly simple integration gives you every way to pay. Try out the sandbox and see for yourself at braintreepayments.com slash twitch. This episode of Twitch is brought to you by iFixit. Introducing the all-new ProTech Toolkit, the compact and complete toolkit for all things gadget repair. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to iFixit.com slash twitch and enter the code twitch, that's T-W-I-C-H, at checkout. Welcome to Twitch This Week in Computer Hardware Twitch Weekly Show. The names to bring you the most useful, most informative, most engaging, most compelling, and today, most late hardware news oh my goodness we've had a fascinating evolution this morning involving skype skype upgrades and skype upgrades not communicating to each other well communicating to each other without video so uh if i or the producer sound like we're about to burst into tears at any moment it's probably uh because we are uh, Ryan is on special assignment somewhere north of us in Northern California, possibly being taken hostage by a major video card manufacturer. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to name them, so I won't. But it's been interesting. The video card manufacturer in question is not NVIDIA, but it's a really good article up on uh, Tech Power Up. And I should probably say it's more of a rumor up on Tech Power Up that NVIDIA is, uh, quote, preparing new pricing for GeForce GTX 900 series. Basically, uh, as one might hope as we get closer to Christmas and total financial insolvency. It uh, looks like they're going to be dropping the prices on the GeForce GTX 900 series uh, part. So it's up on uh, techpowerup.com. Uh, the 970 is going to drop down to 299 and we should see uh, the GTX 90, 980 sitting at around $449. Uh, the GTX 960, in theory, could be around $179, which is just a wee bit more than the GTX 950, which uh, is the kind of the new the GTX 950 is the new 750 Ti, uh, is in the sort of best $150, I want to do 1080p gaming and I'm not worried about 4K gaming right now card. It's a good choice. Uh, performance is really good because the 750 Ti does pretty well and a uh, GTX 950 pretty much spanks the 750 Ti. Um, interesting news um, from HDST, uh, kind of the, the hard drive manufacturer, uh, which is a subset of Western Digital, which kind of used to be, well, I guess it went from, IBM to, um, boy, I can't even remember the name it went to after that to uh, HGST. It's been a long time. Essentially, UltraStar drives the HE10, a 10 terabyte helium filled drive. The article's up on the Inquirer. This thing's a beast. Um, Quote, one of the things that we're seeing is that modern data centers are rarely ambient. They can be hotter, drier, colder, or more harsh in terms of contamination in their environments. Uh, and they claim that it can operate. Basically, uh, they're, they're claiming it can operate anywhere, even underwater, uh, as is, is encased in a microclimate, uh, which is something we're very familiar with uh, here in uh, Northern California. And the idea that if you drive a mile, the temperature can go up 10 degrees, drop 20 degrees. You can go from rain to fog to... Uh, to apparently the inside of a hard drive that doesn't change. So um, this is uh, not their, it, it's, they've shipped like 4 million 10 terabyte drives, they're saying in the article, uh, Western Digital saying, uh, Brendan Collins, their vice president of hard disk drive product marketing, um, that does their sort of shingling, overlapping magnetic tracks. Um, but they, uh, 
quote, tended to be more reliable in the environments because of the sealed nature of the product. Um, 56% fewer terabytes per watt than an air-filled drive and can operate anywhere even under water. So first 10 terabyte helium filled drive for general purpose data use uh, currently being sampled will be available early in 2016 as part of the active archive petabyte scale out team. So they've been doing six gigabyte and eight gigabyte versions and the 10 terabyte version is new. Uh, Aces Maximus 8 Gene motherboard review. I've been playing around with a, a Maximus 8, Maximum 8 Impact Mini ITX motherboard. Uh, Mori Titlebaum has a, excuse me, Title Man, not Title Mom. Uh, Titleman has a full review of the Maximus 8 Gene motherboard up on PCPer.com. This is a beast. Um, you know, it's it's Aces Republic of Gamers uh, motherboard lineup. Um, Intel Z110, so it's ready and good to go. It is a Skylake box. Uh, black chrome heat sinks, giving it a sleek and modern appearance, writes Maury. I don't know where my accent's going today, but it's all over the map. Um, $230 for the MSRP, which is pretty reasonable. And of course, uh, dual channel DDR4 memory. The motherboard layout's pretty sweet. If you, yeah, that's the perfect shot right there. Um, it's amazing how much is going on with the Z170 chipset. USB 3.1, 3.0, 2.0, um, HDMI 1.4B, and DisplayPort on the motherboard. Their Supreme FX, uh, basically discrete audio system that they've they've put on there. Um, Man, uh, two PCI X16 slots, one PCI 3.0 by four slot, uh, the M.2 socket, um, which is in SATA mode, not NVMe, which is kind of a bummer, but not a big bummer. It'd probably be a lot more expensive. Um, four DDR4 slots, eight USB 3.0 ports, four USB 2.0 ports, uh, and six GATAS, six SATA, six gigabit per second. Ports. It's a pretty good collection uh, and a big red reset button on the bottom, which makes me super happy. Um, this is uh, this is a nice motherboard. Um, it's interesting taking a look at uh, how consistent the performance has been across a lot of these motherboards. Uh, I've been looking at a couple of them. Overclocking or friendliness of overclocking and the applications that come with them kind of make a bigger difference. Um, but they, yeah, they got, Mori got... A 4.67 gigahertz clock speed uh, with a 4.5 gigahertz ring bus speed. Uh, they couldn't get it any higher on the base clock speed than 167 megahertz. Um, got the memory up to 3,466 megahertz. And that's pretty badass in terms of stock and overclock performance. Um, 230 bucks on Amazon and Newegg are 228.99. I think it's a silver PC award. Uh, they weren't... Mori wasn't a big fan of where the M.2 port location was. He really wanted to see an integrated Wi-Fi controller at that price. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's tough. The, the PCI, uh, basically the M.2 board is right in between the PCI Express slots, which is kind of a tough position to put it in. But not the badass top of the line motherboard but it's also 230 bucks and has a tremendous amount of storage that's a pretty good deal on that one also i'm still obsessed with the idea of a 10 terabyte drive i cannot imagine how much those are going to cost um <laughs> if you are looking for a a fully ridiculous case and i say that in an affectionate way uh consider the fantex n through mini xl dual system enclosure uh Instead of, uh, well, two motherboards, one cup, I think pretty much sums it up. Uh, one power supply unit powering up two uh, motherboards. Uh, Fantex has done some really interesting cases in the last few years, but this is, again, uh, a power supply unit splitter inside the case that allows two systems to use a single power supply unit. Uh, has an optional mini ITX upgrade kit. Quote, with the overwhelming response from the community, users have requested for a solution to the Enthu Mini XL's dual system configuration setup. Today, Fantex announces the release of the Enthu Mini XL dual system. The Mini XL dual system will have Fantex power splitter and the Mini ITX upgrade kit pre-installed, which is pretty nice, actually. It's much easier than installing it yourself. Um, basically, you can have a high-powered gaming system 
uh, you know, and a gaming system and a streaming system or a workstation and a, and a high-end gaming system all stuffed in the same box. That you're looking at right there is the crazy power splitter. Uh, it allows a dual system configuration to operate independently of one another. So you can power off one system, power on the other system. Um, as long as either of the systems is running, the power supply unit will be fully operational. I'm thinking you should probably go on the large side for the power supply unit for this in case you want to run both machines. Um, more on this in the future, I suspect some testing will be coming. Ladies and gentlemen, I suspect you want to retire. You may have financial goals. You may want to buy a house someday, which you should, uh, you should go check out right now. Wealthfront.com slash Twitch. They're a sponsor of the show. You know you should be investing your money uh, for the long term, for you, for your family's financial health. Um, you probably wondered how you should do it. You know, do I need a broker? What about these guys on the internet? What about that guy that screams at the camera on the television? Um, takes time, takes effort, takes luck. Look, there's no fees here. Well, there's minimal fees here, right? The traditional advisors, they're, they're dropping like 1% to 3% of what you have under management. Um, they might charge you for transactions or changes. You know, let me just call you and make a bunch of changes every week and add up a $50 here, $100 there. Wealthfront makes it easy really for anyone to access world-class long-term investment management. You get started, you can get started investing today at a minimum of $500. The, the, the barrier to entry is basically non-existent. You, you go up to wealthfront.com, you sign up for an account, it goes to work, monitors your portfolios around the clock, takes action as soon as the opportunity arises. Um, the software optimizes your investment. They're basically trying to get you the best risk-adjusted return, net of taxes and fees. Um, look, we, we've heard from a lot of Twit fans who've used Wealthfront and love how they can diversify their portfolios, buy stocks from in-demand companies, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, all commission-free. I want a piece of that. Go for it. You can do that inside of the Wealthfront uh uh, the Wealthfront tool. Um, it's transparent. It's accessible. You get to view all your accounts in one place. doesn't matter if they're personal, joint, retirement. You get to see every trade Wealthfront made on your behalf and your dashboard right on your desktop or with their mobile app. Sophisticated investment strategies like tax loss harvesting and direct indexing optimize your after-tax returns while lowering your tax bill at the same time. It's cheap. One quarter, 1% a year. That's 25 basis points. Zero commissions, no hidden fees. If you got 30 grand, it's less than $5 a month to invest in. No additional charges for any of the Wealthfront services. It's not like that app you downloaded or your kids downloaded, and every time you turn around, they've charged another $23. Um, it's really simple. One quarter, 1% a year. Wealthfront's managing over $2.6 billion in client assets. It's grown over 20 times in the past two years. What are you waiting for, people? Invest in your future today with Wealthfront. And do us a favor, support this week in computer hardware by going to wealthfront.com slash twitch to sign up and get your free personalized investment portfolio. You'll see the customized allocation they recommend for your profile. And just for Twit listeners, if you sign up to invest, Wealthfront will manage your first $15,000 entirely free of charge for life. Do yourself a favor, join the many Twit fans who have seen huge success with Wealthfront and claim your offer today at wealthfront.com slash twitch. And we want to thank them for their support of this week in computer hardware. You may be shopping for a geek or a gamer in your life uh, or just someone who needs a little something, something to make their computer run better. And you will find a little something, something up on PC Perspective's Holiday Gift Guide. Sebastian wrote this up uh, for PCPer.com. Um, and they broke, it's pretty simple. They broke it up into categories, uh, starting with PC components, then mobile devices like notebooks and tablets. Uh, and then the staff members have some wild card picks. So the Core i7-6700K quad-core unlocked processor, now currently sitting at $431 on Amazon.com, is one of the top picks on the list. Uh, the GTX 980 Ti selling for $600 on Amazon. The R9 Fury 10 selling for $589. Um, which is so awesome. The power color version that has the, uh, uh, it's just nice. Uh, Sandus Ultra 2 960 gigabyte SSD is selling for $199. I'm just going to, you guys just pause and hum to yourselves for a second while I try to order one of those. Oh, it's back up to $277. Gosh darn it. Drats and rats. Um, Samsung's 850 Evos, they're like currently selling for 150 bucks for a 500 gigabyte drive. And if you're looking for speed, uh, the, uh, the uh, Samsung 950 Pro NVM Express drives are crazy. 
And just for fun, since Ryan's not here, we're going to take a look at what he has on his list. The Star Wars X Miniature Games. It's buried a few pages down there. Call me crazy, writes Ryan, but as I get older, I find myself more interested in the world of tabletop games. It's not unusual, Ryan. Just embrace it, especially now that you have children. The Escort Max 360 radar detector, because Ryan likes to drive fast when he goes to visit his old man. The Brames Waves, Hengya, or Hengya, uh, which is a headphone desk hanger, which sounds ridiculous uh, until you find yourself really wanting a place to hang your headphones. That's actually a really cool piece of hardware. And uh, for more of their list, and there's some good stuff on that list, including the awesome Leatherman Squirt um, ES4, which actually has wire strippers built into a tiny Leatherman tool. Do yourself a favor, head over to PCPro.com and look for their PC Perspective Holiday Gift Guide. So uh, not a big shock. New processors coming out next year uh i was kind of surprised how fast they're coming like q2 q3 so summer 2016 intel looks like they're going to be pushing new entry-level processors the apollo lake uh cpus not a lot of information on this it's in digitimes um basically according to sources from the upstream supply chain i.e somebody who works in a factory somewhere most likely in china uh quote inexpensive pcs mini pcs using intel's core i3 penny marceleron processors are currently priced between NT 8,000 and 20,000 and are seeing strong popularity in Southeast Asia and Latin America. So right now we're going to see in basically upgraded versions of the Broswell processors uh, in the first quarter of 2016 for desktops and an upgraded one for notebooks in the second quarter. Then Broswell is going to be succeeded by the Apollo Lake based processors. Uh, it's going to be a dual quad core design, 14 nanometer process, Gen 9 GPU, and support Ultra HD output, USB Type C, and EMMC 5.0. So mostly it looks like those are going to be in foreign markets, but uh, it'll be fun to watch what comes out of that. If you're looking for a badass mobile PC or a, a giant laptop of Doom. Um, uh, yoga, yoga, <laughs> the ThinkPad P40 Yoga. Lenovo announced the P40 Yoga uh, at Autodesk University. They had a big event in Las Vegas. Um, basically, a 2560 by 1440 IPS display, uh, Wacom Active ES technology. So it's like 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity. Um, Wacom worked pretty closely with Lenovo. Uh, quote, professional artists and designers have been clear with the need for absolute precision and accuracy. Working with Wacom, Lenovo developed a unique driver to get closer than ever to the pen-to-paper experience, basically to deliver a comfortable and realistic sketching experience. There's a ThinkPad Pen Pro included uh, and additional pen tips, which give you different levels of tactile feedback, uh, quote, for the professional community. Uh, six Gen Core i7 processors, uh, two gigabyte NVIDIA Quadro M500 card, which is crazy, up to 16 gigabytes of memory on an SO DIMM, which is kind of a bummer, because once you have a Quadro in there, you really want 32 gigabytes of RAM, um, because you're probably doing some pretty badass stuff in real time. 512 gigabyte SSD, Intel 8262 by 2, 802.11 AC wireless, and a lift and lock keyboard from the original ThinkPad Yoga, quote, with a frame that automatically rises around the keys when the Yoga device switches into tablet mode, which is cool because it basically makes it enormously difficult to poke and prod the keys uh, while you're hitting the tablet mode. And actually pretty reasonably priced for the entry-level parts uh, or entry-level units at $1,399, which is not bad for a laptop with those kind of specs. In other Lenovo news, Lenovo and Razer uh, apparently have a partnership for gaming PCs going on. Uh, the Razer Edition computers co-branded between Razer and Lenovo. Razer, of course, uh, being just a monster manufacturer of gaming keyboards uh, and, uh, and mice, of course. Uh, they had a prototype on display at DreamHack Winter 2015 in Sweden. Um, quite the rainbow effect coming underneath the case. Uh, <laughs> it makes me kind of giggle. Uh, PC Gaming Today offers a rich and immersive experience thanks in part to cutting-edge graphics performance, superior processing power, and peripherals designed specifically for gaming. Lenovo will enjoy its system design and engineering expertise, while Razer will enhance the immersive experience for gamers. That must be what all the colored lights are for. So the Lenovo Razer Edition products will be co-branded and reflect the edgy Lenovo Y-Series look and feel with iconic Razer elements like customizable chroma lighting effects. See, I told you it was the lights. Um, DreamHack is the world's largest digital festival, ran 
November 26 to 29 in the south of Sweden. So those, uh, those are shiny. If you're a fan of Razor, that might be a way to go for you. If you're a fan of making money, and chances are you are, and you got a website or an app, you probably should know about Braintree. We've talked to you about it. They're a sponsor here at Twitch. Um, uh, developers around the world have really embraced the Braintree V.0 SDK. It's the easiest way to add secure mobile payments to their apps and websites. It's 10 lines of code. 10 lines of in-app code. Let me say that one more time. 10 lines of in-app code. It does get a lot easier than that. No matter what payment type, Braintree accepts it. Uh, Apple Pay, Android Pay, PayPal, Venmo, credit cards, even Bitcoin. And if something new pops up, Braintree is going to support that too because that is the way they roll. It's the same payment solution used by Uber, Airbnb, and GitHub. So you know it scales. You are not going to get bigger. Uh, or maybe you will, but boy, uh, Uber and Airbnb push a lot of money. Simple, secure payments, code you can integrate in minutes, support for developers. They are covering you. Don't worry about taking days to integrate your payments. With Braintree, you can get it done in minutes. If you don't have time, you can give them a call. They'll even handle the integration for you, walk you through it. The code supports Android, iOS, and JavaScript clients. They have SDKs in seven languages, including .NET, Node.js, Java, Perl, PHP, Python, and Ruby. The code, I am told by people who understand code, is elegant and clearly documented. And I mentioned it before, and I'll say it again. It's 10 lines of in-app code. 10 lines. Get your payments on. That's a good deal. Braintree gives you an easy way to accept multiple payment types with one integration. Integrating it into your app is as easy as inserting a few lines of code. 10. 10 lines of code. Try out the sandbox and see for yourself at braintreepayments.com slash twitch. That is braintreepayments.com slash twich. We want to thank them for their support of this week in computer hardware. Man, there are some cool things going on in the Raspberry Pi universe. Uh, in case you missed it, and you probably did because the entire lot of them sold out in about 20 minutes, uh, Raspberry Pi dropped the Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, which went out for $5. It sold out everywhere. Element 14, Adafruit, the UK, uh, Magpie Magazine. They actually put it on the cover of Magpie Magazine. There's a great Raspberry Pi dot org uh, blog entry on it. Um, the Magpie issue in question, I do not believe has actually shipped in the United States or uh, I just missed it in between uh, drops at the Barnes and Noble. Um, it's really crazy. And I'm really curious to see if it actually sells for $9 because the, the chip PC, uh, the $9 chip PC that uh, was a Kickstarter project earlier this year is shipping in the next week or two. Just got my address confirmed on that one. Um, but this is crazy. So on this tiny little board that you can see next to that $5 bill, it's like a, probably a quarter of a $5 bill. Uh, you're talking about a Broadcom uh, BCM2835 processor that's got a 1 gigahertz ARM 11 core, which it makes it 40% faster than a Raspberry Pi 1. Uh, 512 megabytes of uh, LPDDR2 SD RAM, which is not a lot even for a Raspberry Pi. A micro SD card slot, mini HDMI socket for 1080p 60 frames per second video output, micro USB sockets for data and power, a 40-pin GPIO header, uh, which is the same pinout as the Model A, B, and 2B, or B Plus and 2B, a composite video editor, not a populated, so if you want to get it running, you're going to get your soldering gun out, and it's 65 millimeters by 30 millimeters by 5 millimeters. Um, it runs Raspbian, it runs Scratch, it runs Minecraft, it runs Sonic Pi, uh, and as near as I can tell, it is completely sold out uh, unless you manage to get one of the free Raspberry Pi Zeros on a copy of the Magpie Magazine, which should be in Micro Center stores if you're in the Midwest or on uh, the shelves of Barnes & Noble sometime in the next week or two. So I will, uh, I will keep my eyes open for it. I do not have high hopes of grabbing one, but a young geek can dream, or an old geek can dream. Uh, in the meantime, Raspberry Pi 2s still rock. And one of the links they had, uh, PC Per found this one, put it up, oberonstation.x10.mx. This is really interesting. Uh, a self-contained, FPGA-based, 32-bit computer designed specifically to run Oberon Risk, <laughs> as described by professors Nicholas Wirth and Jörg Gutnecht in Project Oberon, the new edition 2013. Um, 
you know, you can get a PS2 keyboard, a mouse and monitor by a VGA cable. Uh, so it turns into a complete Oberon station uh, that boots in about one second from the USD card. Uh, total source code for the Oberon GUI environment, risk compiler and applications is up on projectoberon.com. Um, that's a pretty badass boot time. And the kit sells for $139, assembled and tested. Oh, no, the assembled ones are sold out. But you can buy one, assembled and tested. No, no, you can still buy one completely assembled and tested with all of the extras like the mounting base and the USD card with the Oberon image. Um, ships priority mail for 6 bucks. So if you want to get some crazy risk station action going on, you have an option for that one. And uh, I think somebody was saying it was a lot like programming an Amiga um, <laughs> which is an experience I don't know if I miss. Uh, although I was, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Like part of the idea is, you know, that it's kid-friendly, um, which is kind of interesting because having a kid that's learning how to program with Scratch um, uh, is uh, has been a lot of fun to walk my son through, but that's running on a standard um, uh, OS ten installation. So... It's interesting, you know, yeah, the Oberon Station descended, uh, Jeremy has a great write-up on PC Per, descendant of the Pascal programming language, um, which is basically the OS and the programs that will run on the Oberon Station. Uh, so it won't do as much as a Pi, but it's basically engineered as a, a tool for programmers, uh, young programmers, who won't have to, quote, learn the odd and twisted world of Linux, at least not yet. Yeah, the register was the one who compared it to learning on a ZX Spectrum or Amiga 600. Um, which is incredibly old school, but delivered a lot of amazing programmers into the world. Oh my goodness. Uh, one last thing on the personal, tiny, cheap computer side of things. Uh, C4 Labs on that. I did a quick review of the Invasion for Raspberry Pi 2 and B+. Uh, they're up at c4labs.net, and uh, that was on uh, Tech Thing this week. Um, it's a really nice enclosed case. It's very distinctive. It's sort of a squatting black alien thing, uh, and very different from the Zebra cases we've looked at. Um, I've been liking their cases a lot. They make them up in Tacoma, Washington. And they do a pretty good job. Uh, as somebody who's left Raspberry Pis floating around in his backpack and knocked surface mount components off them, it's really nice where the Zebra is set up where everything is in controlled uh, and protected and still accessible. And the Invasion, you'll either love the design or hate it, um, but if you want something that will sort of lurk on your desktop, uh, it's a pretty good design that way. Let me turn some more light on that one. But uh, I really like this design. And if I could get it in front of the camera, you can actually see it. Uh, and you can actually pick up heat sinks for all the processors on the Raspberry Pi for an extra two bucks. They'll throw in three heat sinks. And this is kind of funny. The invasion is set up so you can run a fan on it if you're sort of a crazy overclocking kind of user. So something to keep an eye out for if you're looking for a better way to protect your Raspberry Pi. And let me turn that light off. It's good stuff. They actually all do a whole bunch of stuff for all sorts of uh, small computers on there, um, including actually Arduino cases too, which are pretty cool. Let's see. iFixit.com. If you haven't seen it, uh, iFixit has a new ProTech toolkit, but I should probably stick to the ad. Oh, they do have the one for the ProTech toolkit. The uh, I've been using these for years. Um, look, iFixit.com is your complete... DIY electronics repair solution from their 15, they're up to 15,000 step-by-step repair guides to their huge inventory of replacement parts and tools with a lifetime warranty. iFixit has all your repair needs covered. And uh, if you haven't seen it, I got to say, I love the update to the ProTech toolkit. Um, we we're talking about, uh, I've been using this for about a week now. They've added 10 more bits, but you notice something? Nothing's falling out. <laughs> it's just, so smart. They have an individual holder for each bit. They've added another 10 bits in there. They've got a nice new driver, which is even nicer than the older driver they included in there. This one's all aluminum, has a good knurled grip, and you could probably hammer nails with it if you were that kind of person. Um, the case is awesome because the top is magnetic. There's no clip-on anymore, and there's a magnetic uh, basic base in the nylon roll-up that sticks it in place, which I also started using to hold screws while I was pulling stuff apart. More bits means fewer repair roadblocks. Um, 
Flex retention for hard to reach screws. They've got a ton, like three different pairs of uh, ESD safe tweezers, including a pair of reverse tweezers, which means they hold on to things uh, or they let go of things when you squeeze them and hold on to them when you let them go. A suction cup for display assembly removal that will not rip the front or crack your small devices like iPhones and Android phones. More plastic opening tools, including their Jimmy, which is a really nice case cracking tool. A metal spudger. Uh, I fix its own. Uh, collection. Uh, it's just a really, I, I like spudgers and they've made their spudgers more durable and the edges are holding up a lot better on the new spudger design. So yeah, I talk about spudgers. I'm a geek. I, I roll like that. Um, and they have something that I will probably never use an ESD safety strap. So if you're the kind of person that likes to strap yourself to your motherboard while building a PC, yeah, I fix it folks. Have you covered? Look, it's the same price as the classic ProTech Toolkit. It's $64.95, and it's backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. Buy it because it's awesome. Even if you don't, you can still get free access to all the repair resources on iFixit.com. Selling hardware like this, tools like this, repair parts is what makes it possible for iFixit to get all of those repair guides up online. Um, I have one of these for my wife. I have one of these at work. I have one of these at home. They are incredibly useful. Well, I get two of the older ones. I just got one of the new ones at home. Um, they are really useful. I have used them to fix a lot of things in my house and my truck. Do us a favor. If you need some good tools or you need a good Christmas gift, visit ifixit.com slash twit to purchase one for yourself, plus all the DIYers and techies on your list. New ProTech Toolkit makes the perfect gift, and if you use our code TWIT, you'll save $10 off your purchase. That's ifixit.com slash TWIT, and use the code TWICH at checkout to save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. And we want to thank ifixit.com for their support. Good people over there. If you're running an AMD Radeon Crimson, the new driver, uh, and you've noticed your fan has been howling, uh, AMD acknowledged, acknowledged the issue this uh, weekend and claim that a fix should be available immediately. Uh, should be able uh, now. Basically, the driver was spinning fans up like 100%. Uh, some were seeing issues where the driver slowed the fan, driver slowed the fans down to 30%, no matter what the load is. If the load was high, if the load was low. Um, you know, in the meantime, uh, Scott Michaud warns that you will want to keep an eye on your CPU, your GPU, pardon me, uh, uh, to make sure it is not uh, running a little too hot. Keep an eye on your fan settings, reset them as necessary, and if you have not done so already, update the latest version uh, of the Radeon Crimson software. That would be a good thing to keep your GPU healthy. And uh, one last thing before we go, MSI's Thermal Take Make Motherboard Specific Water Block. Um, Liquid coolings, I've been all over liquid cooling the last few months, and it's been picking up speed, I think. Um, so usually a water block presses up against the CPU's heat spreader, uh, but this one, Scott writes up, is a bit different. MSI and Thermaltake decided to team up and make a motherboard-specific cooler that pulls heat away from the CPU and the motherboard's uh, VRM MOSFETs. So water chills the CPU and its power delivery, uh, which might be a bottleneck when overclocking. So this is going to work with the MSI Z178 Gaming M5 motherboard, which is a Skylake DDR platform, USB 3.1, SATA Express. Um, this is not a closed-loop cooler. It is old school. You are going to have to get your plumbing on and be careful that you don't get water on your motherboard. That will let the magic smoke out, uh, which is always emotionally traumatic. Um, you know, and it's designed for one motherboard. So it will not move to your next motherboard. So uh, if you buy one, understand that it is going to be a one-time purchase for that motherboard, and uh, it will not migrate to new motherboards in the future. Pricing not currently available, uh, but it uh, should be interesting to see how that turns out and if any of the crazy hardcore overclockers get anything uh, in terms of a serious performance boost out of it. So as I mentioned, Ryan is up in uh, a secret location somewhere in Northern California. We'll see him back here on This Week in the Computer Hardware next week. Uh, in the meantime, keep an eye out on PCPro.com to see what wonders he was covering since I'm pretty sure he'll be able to talk about those in the near future. Uh, I'm up on TechThing, T-E-K-T-H-I-N-G.com, and our new episode is available right now. Uh, 
you can get a slightly less dim look at that Raspberry Pi case. Uh, Shannon did 17 different apps and hacks to make holiday traveling a lot easier. We talk about router updates uh, and why pretty much the entire Internet of Things is completely and utterly broken and will be for a long time. Plus a couple product reviews, some viewer questions. You can find that all at techthing.com. In the meantime, on behalf of myself uh, and, uh, and Ryan, I'm going to say thank you so much for listening. Go to twit.tv slash T-W-I-C-H to find all of our older shows and learn how to subscribe. And uh, hey, again, thanks for listening. I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you next week on Twitch. Twitch.